Ladies and gentlemen, it's a real pleasure for me to be here in what I can immediately see is the nightclub centre of Malta uh, for this um, important uh, innovation summit uh, and to have the opportunity to discuss with all of you uh, the opportunities that research and innovation in the European Union uh, gives us to support economic and social prosperity. And in speaking to you today, I'd like to address three topics. Firstly, the priority that we in the European Commission attach to supporting research and innovation in Europe. Secondly, I'd like to share some thoughts on Maltese research and innovation uh, systems and policies. And finally, I'd like to say a few words about how we, with European Union instruments and policies, are able to support Malta and other member states as we seek to uh, create a dynamic and successful um, uh, European economy fit to meet global competition. So on my first point, research and innovation are clearly crucial drivers in long-term economic growth, in supporting high-quality jobs and prosperity. By investing in research and innovation, we're investing in Europe's future. Research and innovation help us to compete globally and preserve our unique social model. Research and innovation also improves the lives of millions of people here in Europe and around the world as we seek to help solve some of the biggest societal and generational challenges, such as climate change, food security, and public health. The European Commission is fully committed to contributing to promoting the vast opportunities offered by the changing dynamics of innovation. For this reason, our Commissioner for Research and Innovation, Carlos Moidas, um, presented earlier this year a renewed European agenda for research and innovation uh, to Europe's leaders. And I'm happy to say that this new strategy uh, was endorsed uh, by our heads of state and government in May 2018. It provides an ambitious research and innovation agenda to ensure Europe's future economic and social prosperity. In particular, it presents a series of priorities and actions to deepen Europe's innovation capabilities. And our first priority is to boost public funding and to stimulate private investment in research and innovation. Europe is unfortunately still a long way off our target of delivering 3% of gross domestic product on research and innovation. And so swiftly adopting the Commission's proposals for the next uh, medium-term budget for the European Union covering the period 2021 to 27 is for us a key priority. And we're hoping to see that um, significantly advanced uh, to conclusions, we hope, uh, before the next European Parliament elections uh, next summer and before the end of the mandate of the present Commission. Our second priority is to improve the regulatory framework for innovators to operate and thrive. Europe needs a regulatory framework geared towards innovation with the flexibility to adapt to a rapidly evolving industry and society. Building future-proof EU and national regulatory frameworks that apply the, what we call the innovation principle is, I think, for us a very important first step. We in the Commission already uh, test out our legislative proposals uh, against this innovation principle, and it's something that we think should be done more generally in member states also in legislation at national level. The Commission is also piloting what we call innovation deals, uh, which gives us an opportunity to work with stakeholders uh, to overcome obstacles in the implementation of existing legislation where they hold back innovation. We also need to make Europe a front-runner in market-creating innovation. We can, I think, and we must do better at generating disruptive and breakthrough innovation that creates markets for the future. We need to be more effective in supporting innovators who have the really good ideas that are so prolific in the European research um, and innovation community and help support them in developing those ideas into commercial successes uh, ready to meet global competition. Finally, the new agenda that I'm describing uh, recalls the importance of research and innovation in addressing the very real challenges and concerns of our citizens in their daily lives, uh, such as the digital revolution, 
climate change and cancer research. It also, we hope, will help to keep Europe at the in the position of global leadership in pushing back the frontiers of fundamental science, such as the very recent discovery by EU-funded researchers of a few new planets out there in space. I'd now like to come to my second point, uh, which is where Malta fits into this picture. Malta has made impressive improvements in its scientific performance over recent years. It has one of the most international and open science bases in the European Union, um, and rec Maltese researchers frequently cooperate with their counterparts in the European Union and beyond. Malta has also been quick in grasping emerging opportunities and attracting foreign direct investment, as illustrated by the booming services sector. It's also been able to leverage these investors, investments to create a vibrant local ICT community, as we see very visibly present at this event today. At the same time, Malta's research and innovation system is still young and potentially vulnerable. Although performance has improved since 2010, Malta remains, according to the 2018 EU Innovation Scoreboard, what we call a modest innovator. And as we all know, Malta is still some way off from your national target of devoting 2% of GDP to research and innovation. As part of what we call the European semester, through which we support member states in coordinating economic policies across the European Union, the, U the Commission has consistently highlighted the res role of research and innovation for increased productivity and long-term competitiveness. In our annual country reports, the Commission has recalled that Malta needs to strengthen the quality and efficiency of the public science base, enhance the provision and training of highly skilled graduates in key scientific disciplines, and to build stronger science to business linkages. And although the recommendations that the Commission puts forward um, in the European semester um, are not binding, uh, we believe that they provide national authorities with key orientations for achieving their own objectives. And I hope that the objectives also provide a very sound basis for discussion as the political debate on the reform of your research and innovation system advances. And this perhaps brings me to my third, th third section, which is about how we in the Commission c can help and support Malta and other countries as they seek to improve uh, and, and develop their research and innovation systems. Um, the Commission has recently uh, set up a group of international experts, independent international experts, to carry out what we call a peer review of the Maltese research and innovation system. And we're expecting that these independent experts will provide their recommendations for Malta's next research and innovation strategy looking beyond 2020. And I hope that we can work together to increase the visibility of this peer review among key ministries, departments, and in the wider research and innovation community in Malta in order to uh, stimulate a real uh, far-reaching uh, and uh, I hope ambitious discussion um, um, on the opportunities for the future. Uh, for almost 40 years, the European Commission has provided financial support to research and innovation through our framework programs for research and innovation. And the track record of Maltese researchers and innovators in the current framework program, Horizon 2020, highlights the country's openness and its research and innovation potential. It also shows the funding opportunities under Horizon 2020 are well understood by the Maltese researchers and innovators. Malta has received more funding from Horizon per inhabitant than what we still, I think, probably wrongly call the new member states, the EU 13. Um, and relative to the number of scientists and engineers in its population, Malta is uh, scoring above average across the European Union. Um, and has among the EU 13 countries a higher success rate, that is the number of uh, proposals which are uh, ultimately successful and funded, um, which is higher th at 19.5%, higher than the 18% average for the EU 13. And I'm very happy that after this conference, I'll have an opportunity to meet with uh, Professor 
Mikhailev, who is one of the first scientists in Malta who's received the prestigious Starter Grant of the European Research Council for his work on topologically driven uh, meteoric groundwater. In addition, as part of our program to spread excellence and widen participation of Horizon 2020 by all member states, Malta participates in four twinning projects and one teaming project. And the teaming project, for example, the Maltese Ministry for Tourism, um, responsible for aviation, and the Maltese Council for Science and Technology are working together with the Dutch National Aerospace Laboratory towards the establishment of a national aerospace center in Malta. I also welcome Malta's strong engagement in our PRIMA initiative to support environment, food, and water research in the wider Mediterranean region. For the future, the Commission has proposed a budget of 100 billion euros for Horizon Europe uh, for our next EU research and innovation framework period covering the years 2021 to 2027. Horizon Europe is one of the very few EU programs where the Commission has proposed an increase for 2021 to 27 on the present funding period, and this increase is at an unprecedented level, particularly if you take account of the departure of the United Kingdom. The Commission's proposals include the doubling of the budget for sharing excellence, that is, promoting um, research and uh, innovation activities uh, and addressing the innovation divide between member states to help countries like Malta and the other EU 13 countries uh, to catch up with the best levels of performance in the European Union. Because I think Horizon Europe will continue to fund excellent science. It will also take forward the societal challenges and industrial technologies in a more top-down approach to addressing global challenges and opportunities. And we will have a very strong influence on digital technologies, uh, which I think fit very well with Malta's own national priorities. Another of the new features in Horizon Europe is that we will articulate some of our support around what we call missions, high profile, easy to understand uh, goals for cross-cutting research, which we hope will give more visibility and more direct appeal to European research and innovation activities uh, for our citizens. Uh, finally, we're also working hard to develop further, and this is a real priority of Commissioner Moidas, to develop further uh, the innovation component of uh, Horizon Europe uh, with the proposal to create the European Innovation Council, uh, we hope which will mirror the spectacular success that we've seen through the European Research Council for Fundamental Research. With a proposed budget of 10 billion euros over the period, uh, the European Innovation Council will seek to de-risk innovations by filling the financing gap that holds back European innovators. We hope to develop and deploy breakthrough innovations and support the rapid scale-up of innovative firms carrying out disruptive inno innovation. The Commission's uh, representative office here in Malta can help you to find out more about EU research and innovation policies and their potential benefits for Malta. Similarly, your colleagues in Brussels, including your representatives in the European Parliament, have effective networks which I encourage you to exploit. And I also um, invite you to visit the stand of your national contact point, uh, Lili Vasileva, from the Council of Science and Technology, which is in the exhibition space, who I'm sure will be able to give you some very practical um, and useful information about, about the different funding opportunities that we have. So, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I just want to say that Malta has come a long way since its accession to the European Union. It's managed to build a research and innovation system which is well integrated into the European landscape. Maltese policymakers, scientists, innovators, and other stakeholders are actively involved in strengthening the research and innovation base. At the same time, there are many challenges that lie ahead of all of us, and I can assure you that the Commission is fully committed to working with you on addressing them. And thank you very much for your attention, and I wish you a very successful conference. Ladies and gentlemen, hands together for Mr. Patrick Child.